birthdays and Christmas that we receive presents from others. And you receive presents from people and presents. The one thing about presents that many times presents are surprises. And the problem with surprises, surprises can be very uh, uh, tricky. In other words, nobody wants to get something they don't want. And I don't know about you, but I've received things in the past I did not want. You know, and you have to like, I really did want that. And you're smiling, you know, like you really did not, did not want that. And I, I found, especially with people you know, you're close with, and you have that access to speak into their life. I found in order to mitigate problems that we can do one or two things. We can even hint at what we would like them to get for us, right? You know, we begin to hint and say, you know, drop out little hints and get this for me on, I really appreciate this and et cetera. Or we can just come out and just say, to be honest, say, listen, I want this. I want that. And when you get it, sometimes you pretend you're, you're surprised, even though you told them this is what you want, etc. And basically, it's nice to get what you want. Who will agree with me this morning? I mean, that you want something and you finally get what you want. It's not, you don't want to get what you don't want. It's nice to get uh, what you want. Now, complete flip side of that, you could say this morning, is not to get what you want or to get something, but to have something taken from you. Now, I've seen people have things taken from them, valuable things. I've seen people's houses taken from them. I used to work for a housing association. And when I was practicing or when I was being uh, taught to become a housing officer, sometimes you had to repossess properties. I've seen people's houses taken from them. I've seen people's phones taken from them. Some of you are going to begin to cry right now. Phones taken from them. People, this is, this is, I, the other day I, I went out and I forgot my phone and I felt naked. Come on, somebody say amen for you this morning. Amen. You, you leave your phone at home, you're going to feel like, you know, you're like, I felt like this is, oh, this is, I mean, the world can see my nakedness. You know, it's horrible, 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 horrible. But I've seen people's phones taken from them. I've seen people's money, I've seen people robbed, you know, just, uh, and, 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 and it's, I, and, and listen, not just, not just material things, but immaterial things. I've seen people's joy taken from them. That they're joyous, they, they, their minds are at peace, and something happens, somebody says something, and, and it's snatched from them this morning. And often what i found is what is taken is wanted by somebody else. That you don't just take something you don't, you know, you don't just take somebody's, uh, you know, uh, uh, tissue paper that's blown their bogey on, you, you, know, I, you know. You take what it, you want. Well, this morning, I want to preach a sermon I've called, What the Devil wants to take from you just make no mistake this morning there's the devil and he wants something from every single person especially believers in this building right now let's look at luke chapter 22 two verses 31 and 32 the lord is having a conversation with simon peter the disciples are very close but this is with him and simon and the bible says and the lord said simon simon Indeed, Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith should not fail. And when you have returned to me, strengthen your reverend. Father, this morning, again, we are appreciative of your love, of your grace, your care, your kindness, your, 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 your plans towards us. I'm asking this morning, God, you would minister to every precious man and woman in this place. The devil, he really is a liar and he's trying to rob people this morning. He's trying to take things that they have no idea of. And I'm asking this morning, God, let your word be illuminated over their hearts and their minds. Oh God, I'm asking this morning, you will take the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart. Let them be acceptable before your sight. God, you're my Lord and you're my redeemer. Be glorified in this service. Minister to men and women. Let them be encouraged. Let them be strengthened. And let them live here in the victory, Lord. We thank you right now in the name of Jesus Christ. And all of God's people said, amen and amen. This morning is going to be a little bit of an uncovering. And I want us first this morning, I want us to uncover a great lie. Because one of the most sobering facts about life is that all humans have a supernatural enemy whose aim is to use pain and pleasure to make us blind, stupid, and miserable forever. 
And this morning, the Bible has several names for him. The Bible calls him Lucifer. You can say Lucifer is his personal name. And this is like my personal name is Abdul Yusuf. Lucifer is his personal name, but also uh, the Bible calls him Satan. Uh, and this is something about his nature that he is an adversary that accuses. Uh, the Bible calls him the old dragon. Uh, this speaks about his duration. In other words, he's been around uh, for a long time. What he's been doing, uh, he has been doing for a long time. Uh, but I believe in every nation, uh, in every culture, every single human being, uh, whatever sphere of society or life you may find yourself, so we all know him as the devil this morning. And we looked at this a couple of weeks ago, this account of Jesus and Peter. And what I was trying to relate to the people of God is no matter how long you've lived for God, no matter how much you may know about God, no matter what you've experienced about God, Satan still wants you. And the truth is the devil is after us all and he wants to take something from you. In John chapter 10, verse 10, the, we learn something vital. The Bible tells us the thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. And I have come that they may have life and they may have it more abundantly. The very first thing the Lord Jesus wants you and I to know about the devil this morning is that he's a thief and the devil wants to take from you. But the Bible makes it very clear that Jesus, he wants to give to you. Listen to me this morning, church. Our God is a giver and I'd rather have what Jesus wants to give to me than to act the fall and have the devil take something from me this morning. In Ephesians chapter 6 verse 11, we are told to put on the whole armor of God that we may be able to stand against the wiles. That word means schemes. That word means trickery. That we have to put on the whole armor of God that we may be able to stand against the trickery of the devil. This one of the devil is a trickster. He has a lot of tricks, you can say, up his sleeves. But I believe one of his tricks, one of his major tricks, is to make you and I think that the problem, singular, or the problem, plural, so I say problems, plural, the problems you are facing is your fault. Now, let me say from the offset before I move on this morning, the problems or the problem you are facing is not your fault. It is important you understand this morning because for some, it is their fault. Some of them have brought whatever problems or whatever issues upon themselves. And you can say the chickens have finally come home to roost. In fact, church, we live in a day and age where many people don't want to take responsibility for their actions and they don't want to listen to wise counsel. And when things begin to fall apart around their lives and you can say things begin to catch up with them, they begin to wonder, how did I get here? Why is this happening? How is this happening this morning? And we've all heard sermons and messages in regards to this that there are things that we bring upon ourselves and it is so true this morning however there are times and can i say if there are some people you really need to hear this morning where you are what you are facing is not your fault listen the best satanic trick is him telling you all the problems you have is your fault all the things that you are dealing with is your fault and here you are believing him and beginning to follow his logic and his thinking. And you begin to think to yourself, yes, it is my fault. Yes, I have done this. Sir. Yes, all this is happening because of me. I want you to consider in John chapter 9, verse 2 and 3. Again, Jesus is speaking with his disciples. And the Bible says they are walking and they see a man. And the Bible tells us, and his disciples asked him, saying, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, neither this man nor his parents sinned, but that the works of God should be revealed in him. Listen, the devil is always trying to isolate people to make them think that it is my fault, it is your fault, it is our fault, that it is something we did, that many times this thinking comes in our mind that you have done something, that I have done something, that you must have done something, otherwise this would not happen. You must have done something, otherwise he would not have reacted this way. You must have done something, that's why you lost this opportunity. You must have done something, that's why this just didn't happen. And Jesus points it blind man let me ask you the same question this morning church if this man was born blind what did he do wrong he's a blind man and he was born this way and church whenever trouble strikes i've learned that people are always looking for somebody to blame 
The Bible tells us Adam, amen, the problem has struck up. And the Bible says Adam turns to God and says, listen, it is the woman that you gave me. David's men wants to stone him because their loved ones are taken away. And they want to stone him because they put full blame upon them. Their loved ones and their families been taken away. Sometimes people don't blame people. Sometimes people blame technology and cameras. You can say this morning that Matt Hancock was blaming the camera that caught him kissing his aide. For the mess in his marriage. Can I remind you again? And his disciples asked him, saying, Rabbi, who sinned? This man or his parents that he was born blind? Jesus answered, said, neither this man nor his parents sinned, but that the works of God, works plural of God, should be revealed in him. You know what I've learned? And what the scripture preaches very, very clearly is there are some things that happened this morning so that God could show off his power. There are some negative things that happen for the sole reason so God can show off his power. The children of Israel have left Egypt. They are living in victory. They have plundered the Egyptians. They have literally given them the wealth of Egypt, the diamonds and the gold and all the jewelries. And they are slaves. And one day they become multi-billionaires and they're leaving and they're going to the promised land. And they, are, they have the victory. They're singing songs. But they come to the Red Sea in front of them and to make matters worse, the, uh, the, the, the Egyptians army is behind them coming to kill them. Now let me pause and ask you a question. Whose fault was that? I tell you right now, it was no one's fault. But if you read the account, they begin to blame Moses for where they found themselves. Listen, the reason why they were there was because God knew what he was about to do. And sometimes this morning, church, there are problems that happen for the sole reason so that God can show off his might and his muscle. Because our God is a powerful God this morning. Our God is able to do exceedingly I and mean, abundantly far above the wicked ask or think. And listen, church, if you and I don't have a problem this morning, God would not have the opportunity to show you and I how powerful he is. The Bible speaks about a wedding in Cana. I mean, Jesus has been invited with his mother, Mary, and they run out of wine. I mean, Mary's told about the problem. Mary does what every single one of us should do when there is a problem. I mean, she doesn't go to Google. She goes to God. I mean, she goes to Christ. She goes to her son. He says, listen, they have run out of wine. And we know the account. Jesus turns water into wine. And you can see, I mean, the chief or those, the person running the ceremony, I mean, turns and says, listen, you guys have overdone yourself. Usually what happens at these occasions People um, uh, give the best wine first uh, and give the rubbish wine uh, at last, uh, at the very last, uh, but you have saved the best for last. Church, our God has not changed. I believe this morning he's a God who really does save the best for last. We see also in the feeding of 5,000, there is a young boy. He has five loaves and he has two fishes. And listen to me, in the hands of this young boy, I mean, the five loaves and two fishes is lunch. But in the hands of Jesus Christ, it is a banquet. And I know this morning, church, that your bank account may seem limited this morning, but it is only limited in your hands. That is why the Bible tells us to and to honor God this morning because in God's hand, God is able to make things stretch. God is able to multiply. Listen, the reason why God is able to take five loaves and two fishes and feed a thousand, he's trying to let us know this morning in our so-called little this morning, God is able to do a lot with a little. That even if you bring it to God, God is able to stretch it. God is able to multiply it. God is able to take it a lot more further than you and I can never do in our own little plans, our own little minds. We serve a supernatural God. In fact, what we call supernatural, God calls natural. We need to understand that this morning, church. So let's uncover a great truth. Because when you look in the Bible, I really believe Job had more trouble and problems than anyone in this building. In fact, I'll go this farther. I believe Job had more problems than anyone in this building put together. Go and read this. Go and read Job 1 to Job 42. You, if you don't hang yourself, it's very depressing. It's only when you get to the very end. In fact, it starts off good. You can say kind of. In the very end, you're like, wow, 
right? It is, it is sad. It is, I and mean, this guy literally lost everything. Now, here's the question. Was his troubles his fault? No. Job 1.1. 1, 1. There was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job. And that man was blameless and upright and one who feared God and shunned evil. Let me say this this morning. Don't allow the devil or your flesh. And let me say this. Your flesh is not your friend. Don't allow the devil or the flesh to blame you this morning. Because in both accounts of Peter and Job, we see a great truth. Now, listen to me very carefully. The devil cannot touch you unless he gets permission from God first. We need to understand this this morning. He cannot, he can't even get close to you unless he first gets permission from God first. Verse 31 of the Amplified Version of our text says, Simon, Simon, listen, Satan has demanded permission to sift you like grain. Jesus is basically saying, Simon, Satan has asked my permission to bother you. That he's coming to me to ask me permission to mess with you. Listen, the you in the Greek is plural. It literally means all off. And we read that, we think that it's just Simon, but no, 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 no. He wants to mess with all the disciples. Can I say to you this morning, church, the devil wants to mess with all of God's people. It's not just the pastor. It's not just those in ministry. Amen. It, it, it's all of y'all. Every single one of you that carry or name the name of Christ, the devil wants you. And this morning, if you belong to God, you need to understand that the devil cannot touch you without getting permission. And if God gives him permission to touch you or me this morning, it means that God has already set us up to win. Oh, some of you need to hear that this morning. That if God gives that stinking devil permission to come and mess with you, or mess with you this morning, it is a setup for victory. It is a setup for a W. It is a setup for a win this morning. You say, how do I know that? Let's go back to Job. Job chapter 1, verse 7 and 8. And the Lord said to Satan, from where do you come? So Satan answered the Lord and said, from going to and fro on the earth, and from walking back and forth on it. Then the Lord said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job, that there is none like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man, one who fears God and shuns evil. Here's God in his glory in heaven, his majesty he's on the throne, he's ruling and reigning, he's, he's running things. And the Bible says the angels are all there. This is glory. This is heaven. This is where eye has not seen, ear has not heard. And I tell people all the time, amen, this morning, the devil knows what you and I are missing. The devil knows what, you, what, what, what God has in store for us. That's one of the reasons trying to stop you from getting there. And here he's in the majesty of heaven. And the Bible says in this scene, I, I, this is some deep business. I mean, Satan comes in. The devil comes in. And here is God and the devil having a conversation. Hey, where have you been? I've been, well, I've been going to and from the earth. For, you know, just kind of checking things out. And God says, have you considered my job and job, my servant job? In other words, it is God who recommended Job. How many of you read about the story of Job? You know about the story of Job. Lift your hand up. Amen. It is God who recommended Job. You know exactly what happened to Job. It is God who recommended Job. Now, I know what some people are thinking right now. God, I beg you, don't recommend me. Or, God, I'm not blameless like that guy. Or, don't, <laughs> I don't want that smoke. I don't want that problem. Or, <laughs> there's other people, you know, like, uh, like, uh, like, 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 like brother uh, 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 Charlie. Uh, don't harass him. You don't, don't harass me. I, I don't need any, any drama in my life. And the Bible says Satan goes from there. And he says these words to God. He says, God, the only reason Job is serving you is not for no reason at all. That Job is not doing this for no reason at all. And in the very end of the conversation, after God, Job begins to, uh, Satan begins to say, listen, if you take away his riches, if you take it, he will curse you to your face. At the very, very end of it, in verse 12, the Bible says, and the Lord said to Satan, behold, all that he has is in your power. Only do not lay a hand on his person. In fact, in chapter 20, chapter 2, verse uh, 6, he says these words, he is in your hands, but spare his life. 
Because in other words, uh, the, the devil goes away, doesn't sing, comes back to God. Uh, amen. God speaks again. The devil goes away. Uh, and and, and I, what I want you to see this morning is the devil had to mess with Job. But here's the thing this morning. He didn't just get permission. He got the terms of the attack. In other words, you can do this, but you can't do that. You can touch here, but you can't touch there. You can go here, but you can't go there. He didn't just say, he didn't just give him a free, free reign. He got terms of what he could do and what he could not do. And I know people's mind, you will read this, you think, why would a God who says he loves me, why would a God who says he cares about me, why would a God who says he's with me and has the power to keep back hell from my life, why would he do this? I'm going to tell you two reasons. Number one this morning, God wants his glory. I don't think we really appreciate the glory of God. Let me burst some bubbles this morning. God's glory is far more important than you. I'm going to preach about the glory of God one day. It is far more important than you and I. Oh, he loves me. He loves me. If I was the only one in the world, he would have come and died for me. God's glory is far more important than me. It really is. But number two this morning, God wants to prove to Satan. And in the case of Joel, that you and I are not just serving God just because of the benefits. Job was being protected. Satan said, you put a hedge around him. In other words, I, I, I thought about messing with this guy, but I could not because he was protected this morning. That you and I serve God because we desire to be in a relationship with God. Church, that we actually do love God this morning. That we actually do want to please God. That we actually do want to do the will of God. That is not just about the car. It's not just about the house. It's not just about the employment. It's not just about the blessing, the brains, or the benefits this morning. We actually love Jesus. I hope so. Listen to me. Salvation is a marriage. I, re- I think we forget that this morning. It's not the marriage as the world sees marriage that the moment something goes wrong or the moment a person we so called claim we love uh, trips us up or messes us up or says something uh, and then we just divorce them this morning, church. Uh, salvation is God's idea for marriage. That means in sickness and in health. Uh, that means for better or for worse. That means for richer or for poorer this morning. Uh, a man or woman who is in Christ should be on the Lord's side. That we are committed to him regardless of what may come. So if you belong to God, the devil just can't throw anything at you without permission. And if he gets permission this morning, God knows how much you can bear this morning. And God will not suffer you to be tempted above that which you are able. So if you're going through, and remember this morning, you are going through. David says, though I go or walk through the valley of the shadow of death this morning, eh? church, you are more than able to handle whatever you may be going through. So let's uncover a great God. We've uncovered a great lie. We've uncovered a great truth. But now let's uncover a great God. So what is the devil after? What does he want to take from us? What does he want to take from you? What does he want to take from me? First of all, I believe he wants your prayer life. Pastor, why are you always talking about prayer? Because prayer is important. Jesus saw it as important. And so did the devil. Listen to Luke chapter 18, verse 1. Jesus says, then he spoke a parable to them. That men always ought to pray and not lose heart. So I'm going to ask you a question I've always asked all of God's people. I've heard many pastors ask it on this pulpit as well. And until the rapture happens and the church goes to heaven, you're always going to hear this question. What is your prayer life like? What is your prayer life like?
I let that settle. What is your prayer life like? Well, just because you don't see me pray doesn't mean I don't pray. The disciples saw Jesus pray. I saw my grandmother pray. There are prayers in the Bible that are recorded. That means somebody saw them pray. And what I've learned is when people say, just because you don't see me pray, doesn't mean I don't pray. That normally means you don't pray. That normally means, that normally means I'm going to be nice to you that you don't pray as you ought to pray. You know what I've learned? People who pray don't worry. And people who don't pray worry. And let me throw it out. Worry is a sin. Not in, it's a sin. So I'll throw it again. When you don't pray, you go to worry. When you pray, you tend not to worry. He wants to take your prayer life. Number two, he wants to take your devotional time. And when I talk about devotion, I'm talking about when we study the word of God, when we, when we meditate upon it and we begin, to, we begin to study it our own self. Maybe we've taken notes and we've written it down and, and we've gone back home and we've kind of churned upon it a bit and just, just digested and take it a bit more. Or maybe we've got devotional and devotionals that have little study things just to, just, to, just, to, just to build our faith that bit more. Let me tell you something. I, I, you know, when people get saved and get right with God, they begin to develop an appetite for the word and the things of God. They want to grow. They want to develop. Uh, they want to spay, uh, uh, say spiritual babies. They want to become all the men and women God has created and called them to be. But it comes a time this morning when maybe that begins to diminish. Listen to what the psalmist says in Psalms 1 and 2. So, chapter 1, verse 1 and 2. He says, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight, here it is, is the law of the Lord. And in his law, he meditates day and night. There are more answers in the word of God than in social media. There are more answers in the word of God than your own understanding. Well, that's just the way I see things. Well, I'm just going to speak my truth. Don't. Why don't you give yourself to the truth? Why don't you give yourself this morning to read, to study, and give yourself to the word of God this morning? The devil wants your prayer life. The devil wants your study time, your devotional time. But there's one thing the devil wants more than everything else. Let me tell you something. The devil doesn't want to make you drunk. The devil doesn't want to get you high. The devil doesn't want you to catch you watching pornography. The devil doesn't want you cussing out the place. Those are all symptoms of what the root thing the devil wants. What the devil wants more than anything from every single one of us this morning that when he gets this all those other things i mentioned are simply begins to flow out the devil wants to take your faith more than anything hell wants your faith this is the number one thing verse 32 but i have prayed for you satan wants to sift you but i have prayed for you that your faith does not fail. Let me say something. In 2020, many people threw in the towel regarding their faith. 2020 was a demonic assault on hell. And the, 2020 was a time of a great falling away. And the target was faith. The target was your faith and my faith in a faithful God. And many people, though they have thrown in the towel in their faith, I believe this morning that many more, their faith was solidified and anchored in a great God. Because whatever the devil has meant for bad, God wants to turn it around for good this morning. 
And Jesus says something very, very powerful in verse 32. He says, the devil, Satan, has asked to sift you as weak, Peter. Satan has asked to sift you as weak, Tottenham. But here it is in verse 32. I have prayed for you. Listen to what it talks about Jesus in Hebrews chapter 7, verse 25. It says, therefore, he also able to save to the animals those who come to God through him since he always lives to make intercession for them. Do you know where Jesus Christ is right now? Because the Bible says when he died, he rose and he ascended. Let me tell you where Christ is right now. The Bible makes it very clear in Hebrews. He's in the right hand of God. He's in the right hand of God the Father. Guess what he's doing? He's not doing his nails. He's not doing his feet. He, amen, he's interceding for you and I right now. He's pleading before his Father for you and I right now. He's standing in the gap for you and I right now. Church, do you know what would happen if Jesus wasn't praying for us? Because Peter went so low. If you knew what happened after this, how he denied Christ three times, how he denied even you, and he began to cuss, and he began to just literally walk away from the Do you know this morning, church, that this man, how low he went, and he, how low he went to deny the Son of God, but in reality, he would have went so much lower if Christ did not pray for him. The same is true for us. None of us have a clue right now how low things we would be if Christ was not praying for us. You have no idea how messed up things would be this morning if the Son of God was not exactly where he is, making intercession for us. And what blows my mind is Jesus didn't pray that Peter would not have a difficult time. Jesus did not pray that Peter would have a drama-free life. In fact, Jesus did not pray that Peter would not fail. He prayed that his Faith would be strengthened. Listen, if you have faith this morning, you can make it regardless how difficult things may be. If you have faith this morning, church, amen, regardless of what the devil throws at you this morning, you can break through huh? because faith says, I may be going through the waters, but I'm not going to be drowned. I may be passing through the fire, but I'm not going to be burned. I may be going through the valley of the shadow of death, but I'm not going to fear no evil because God is with me this morning. And there ought to be something in the people of God where you begin to understand the devil is trying to put upon you things that he has no right to put upon you this morning. And if he's put upon you this morning, it is because God knows this morning that you will stand for him, you will trust him, you put your faith in him. God says, I believe that she will stand. I believe he will stand. I believe they will believe me. I believe they'll take me at my word. And there ought to be something in every single child of God when you come to a place where you tell that stinking, ranking devil, he cannot take my faith. It's not yours. Put our faith in so much foolishness. One time you've got it right this morning. Don't allow that devil to take your faith. Jesus prayed that Peter's faith would be strengthened, not shattered. And God doesn't want to shatter our faith this morning. Because here's the thing. As long as we have faith, there's hope. Because the Bible tells us faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Faith says my family is going to be okay. Faith says my children are going to be okay. Faith says my mind is going to be okay. Faith says this morning, whatever the trouble is this morning, we are going to get through it. And even if I don't get that job or I lose the job that I'm after, God has another one for me. I want to close with Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 17 and 19. Very powerful words. I'm going to pray. Habakkuk is one of those books we just, even when I say Habakkuk, it's, like, Habakkuk. it's, it's in the Bible. <laughs> it's in the Bible. It's there. It's Old Testament. Powerful prophets. Little dynamite book just of power. It says these words. Though the fig tree may not blossom, nor fruit be on the vine, though the labor of the olive may fail, and the fields yield no food, though the flocks may be cut off from the fold, and there be no herds in the store. I'm going to throw in my little bit, God forgive me. The cost of living may go up. Here we go. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. 
I will join in the God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength. He will make my feet like the deer's feet and he shall make me walk on high heels. I'll say it again this morning, church. If the devil has been given permission to come to you this morning, that means God has set you and I up for victory. Let's give God praise this morning. Let's thank him right now. <laughs> Hallelujah. Lord, we love you in this place. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes. I mean, every head bow, every eye is closed. Very quickly, maybe you're here this morning, you're not right with God this morning. Maybe you're here this morning and all hell literally is breaking loose in your life. And all I can say this morning is because you don't have divine protection. And I'm not saying this morning just because you get saved, you're not going to go through stuff this morning. But I've learned this morning, amen, I'd rather go through troubles and issues in life with God than without him. Without him, you just got to simply lean to your understanding and make a bad situation worse. But God this morning is able to give you wisdom. God is able to take a mess and turn it around to make it a miracle. God is able to work all things out for good for those who love him and are called according to his purpose. And maybe this morning that's you. You're in a mess right now. Well, the good news is there is a miracle working God. But also there's a devil that hates you. And maybe he's setting you up for the killer blow. And God has brought you in this house to rescue you. God has brought you in this house to open your eyes. God has brought you in this house to let you know it's not over this morning if you put your faith in him. We put our faith in money. We put our faith in the doctors. We put our faith in a man and a woman. We put our faith in our own wisdom and understanding. Friend, can I encourage you to put your faith in Jesus? You will never go wrong. Very quickly, under the sound of my voice, you're here right now. You say, Pastor, can you pray with me? I want to give my life to Christ. I, I'm away from God. I've been living life, uh, you know, according to my own understanding. But my eyes are open that there is a devil in hell trying to rip me off. But there's a God in heaven that loves me that wants to give me so much more. And if that's you, you want to give your life to Christ, will you do one thing, my friend? Just lift your hand up and put it down. I want to pray with you very quickly under the sound of my voice. Unsaved this morning, not right with God. Slip your hand up, put it down. Or maybe you've backslid. You're away from God. You were once saved. You were once born again. You once prayed to receive Christ but you began to make decisions that were anti-God or contrary to what you believed and now what you did is open the door for the enemy to come in and run Rashad over your home, over your mind, over your children, over your future, over those around you this morning God is a God of mercy and he is the God who's married to the backslider and if you simply come back to him this morning God is willing and ready to restore you to strengthen you and to welcome you back again if that's you, you want to recommit your life if that's you slip your hand up and put it down here's my hand pray with me pastor i need jesus pray with me pastor i want to recommit my life to the son of god who so loved me and he gave himself for me up and down very quickly final time unsaved or backslider quickly up and down amen amen i want to speak to god's people this morning